Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another airbrush scale modeling video. Today we're going to cover the absolute basics, theories and what is required to get into airbrushing, why you'd want to do airbrushing as well as what needs to be bought and put together to perform the task. Airbrushing is a form a hobby within itself or in a company to other crafts as well as just a tool in your arsenal. There is a bit of a psychological block to hurdle over but the activity is extremely easy. It is ideal to have someone over your shoulder to demonstrate and show you but this video as well as others I've published over time should guide you regardless of what you are painting or how you're going to go about it. Everything that's going to be demonstrated in this video as well as my personal preference will be generic equipment that can be found on websites such as eBay, Amazon, Taobao, AliExpress, Wish and so on. The cost of the bare basic setup should not cost too much more than 100 US dollars but with a bit of shopping you can get the best deal possible there's no need to be intimidated or forced into our brand equipment if you are painting models miniatures artwork plain surfaces cloth or touching up objects and your goal is to do shading high gloss finishes metallics or weathered and rustic objects this art form is uh, definitely of interest. Colouring in basic surfaces can also be done by rattle cans. Airbrushing obviously cuts down that cost and you do not have the disadvantage of visible lines from hand painting. The mechanical theory is very easy in practice. Paint is gravely fed from the cup above and sits behind the needle. Air is blown in front of the nozzle and siphons the paint out. The components required to allow an airbrush to work is an air source, preferably an electrical air compressor from a power source attached to a flexible hose, universal 1 8 inch threaded connecting between the outputs of the compressor and airbrush. Airbrush demonstrated in this video and many others is the HS3, describe them more later. An input is a desired paint externally mixed with a thinner to a consistency thin enough to operate an output. In this chart here, the red represents the paint, the light blue air, a needle is threaded all the way through and seals the nozzle at the end. When the needle is pulled backwards with the trigger behind the cup, it is clamped via a spring and a nut, pulling the whole assembly backwards and allowing the paint to flow out. The trigger, when the pressed downwards, opens an air valve also backed and powered by a spring to allow air to travel underneath the paint chamber and in front of the nozzle again siphoning the paint out. The result produces an atomized mist of air and paint mixed together flying through the air and gently sitting on top of the surface giving a feathered or gradient look in appearance. It can build up for a very heavy coat and solid color or shadowed lightly for all sorts of different effects over one another. By maneuvering the air pressure as well as the trigger you can get a variety spray pattern producing fine lines and other effects. This does take practice but absolutely ideal in a clean brush under perfect conditions which will be studied upon in future videos. The mechanical breakdown of an airbrush at first can be very daunting but through the understanding of this video and other videos I've posted of its disassembly and maintenance makes the process far more streamlined and easy. Each airbrush comes with a sheet similar to this, how to pull it apart as well as a parts guide in case any are worn out or damaged. 
and it is fairly ideal to learn how to disassemble before use and put back together in case anything goes wrong. The air source will be the most expensive component to your setup and comes in many makes, models and purposes. It is ideal to read up and find out what best suits you if it's battery operated, operated from 110 to 40 volt power or a smaller 12 volt portable setup. Models with a air tank regulator and water trap are most advised. Noise pollution can be a very big factor drawing out large industrial compressors found in hardware stores as well as its size but highly recommended for the first timer or beginner is the whole package of a 12 volt compressor. It may fall short in later years but it's a good introduction at a fairly affordable price. Here are some suggested accessories to make the job far more easier or safer for your use. A charcoal filtered respirator geared for gas and particles will protect your lungs from airborne spray. There is health hazards associated to the mixture of thinner paint and air airborne. An extractor booth can suck up all of those fumes and extract it outside or in a larger area. A regulator and water trap can control the airflow coming out of your airbrush and compressor as well as block the majority of water in ruining the atomization of paint and air. An airbrush stand to hold your airbrush as you pour paint and thinner inside. When you're washing out thinner you can do it in the jar instead of airborne. Paint clips and a tray or styrofoam to support them for holding small parts and objects. Other supports can be researched, created or bought. A shot glass or cup for mixing paint externally for the right mixture before pouring into the airbrush. A series of pipe cleaners and spikes for cleaning out the nozzle and other parts of your airbrush during maintenance when the airbrush is disassembled and stainless steel ball bearings to put into your bang jar and shake for a very good mixture opposed to stirring. Do not use mild steel or cheaper ones as rust can disturb the quality and chemical reaction of the paint. Patterns of airbrush you can buy and use include the three major classes. Single action where you depress the air and only have control of when you spray, the adjustment of the pattern sometimes is via the nozzle screw. Double action airbrush where you have easy action between the spray pattern and the amount or when the air comes out. It is most preferable, especially with how affordable it is online. And a spray gun for very large surfaces when you're doing something greater than a foot squared objects such as car panels, rooms, houses or parts. When purchasing a compressor make sure the output is 1 8 inch for the single or double action airbrush with the use of a spray gun as the PSI and air pressure can be far greater a larger industrial compressor is definitely required. With your HS3 patterned airbrush you are also able to change the consumable needle and nozzle which will eventually will wear out. The sizes also depict the narrow and width of the spray pattern with a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 already installed in your airbrush and a 0 0.5. I would recommend upgrading to the 0 0.5 to learn with and downgrading to a 0 0.2 only when fine detail work is being used. Most of the time workhorse airbrushes are only required to colour in objects. We will only look at the hobby classification of paint for your individual, individual or craft. Research this in people who are in the know. The four classes include polyurethane acrylics, which is quite difficult to use and has poor adhesion on the surface, but very popular with hand painters. The thinner and cleaner is exclusively polyurethane, thinner or cleaner. The most uh, popular acrylic alcohol 
which is paint such as Tamir and Gunzi. It's all rounder, but a bit tricky to use due to the thinning ratio preferred. They are fairly watered down already as is. Isopropic alcohol is preferred to thin and clean up. Enamels, very easy to use in the old staple from way back can be cleaned with industrial white spirits or turpentine. This can be a very slow drying paint, easy to clean up, but the surface can be tacky if mixed incorrectly, thus slowing down the drying type. Back to the alcoholic acrylic, the adhesion of it is great as well as the enamel. Lacquer or solvent acrylics are the easiest to use as it's very flexible regardless of the consistency. It is the most toxic when airborne. The other two acrylics seem to be far more safer as they're water soluble. This is exclusively cleaned up with lacquer thinner but has the best adhesion and blends quite nicely. An airbrush should only really use one type of paint at a time without a full soak and heavy maintenance. When changing colours, you should do a thorough clean out and flush until the inner cup and the end of the tip is clean and thinner inside the cup does not dirty and change colour. If you're unsure, it's time for a strip down and a full clean. At first, you'll be very slow and nervous at this speed picks up with time and most important practice finally the whole process is not difficult this may be a lot to take in but my name is alan here is my setup i've been on youtube for quite a while and have developed a lot of content on the airbrushing playlist please have a look through it's not in any particular order but there's quite a few handy tips and tricks to get you started somewhere around assembling one of the setup of airbrushes that are on the channel keep practicing keep trying if you have any questions many in the community will be more than happy to assist you including myself in the comment section do not be fearful in trying go out buy something try it out if it suits you and happy painting thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content and we'll catch you later